but it is time for our second speaker, and he's lived in Krakow since 1991, identifies as European, Polish, British, and as a Krakowian. Uh, he's a citizen of the world, a TEDxer, an immigrant father, and a business and social entrepreneur. He has started more than 30 businesses in Poland, UK, and the US, and currently employs more than 600 people. He has started many initiatives pr promoting entrepreneurship, notably CAM or Entrepreneurs, Kraków Enterprise Mondays, Open Coffee Kraków, and the project Kazimierz Podcast. He's also uh, an ambassador of OMGKRK. He teaches entrepreneurship courses and workshops in schools, universities, and business schools, most recently at the Judge Business School at Cambridge University. He was responsible for the Wojtek the Soldier Bear movement, and the Wojtek statue in Krakow's Park Rodana, for which the Polish government awarded him a Pro Memoria Medal. He has been involved in TED and TEDx events since 2009, and is a curator and founder of TEDx Kazimierz, and is committed to the TED mission of spreading great ideas. Uh, yeah, his subject of his presentation today is something that I am very s familiar with, that is rejection. Um, <laughs> And why you should embrace it, okay? <laughs> so. Welcome on stage, Richard Lucas. Imagine you've just been rejected. Maybe at work, your project was cancelled. You weren't invited to an important meeting, or you missed a promotion. In your private life, a friend stops answering your SMSs. You weren't invited to their party, or someone you were really attracted to didn't want to go on a date with you. Or possibly even worse, they went on the date and then nothing happened afterwards. <laughs> it's, not, it's not great. I don't know if all of these things happened to you, but we all know the feeling of pain that goes with rejection. And it's natural to avoid pain, it's normal. But the reason I accepted the invitation to come on the talk and roll stage was to tell you that you should embrace rejection, that rejection is the flip side of opportunity. I'm going to argue that in my life, Fear of rejection held me back, and changing that created enormous opportunities to improve my life. I'm going to explain how it worked for me, how it can work for you and for other people, both in your working life and in your private life. And I'm going to end with a call to action, because a talk and roll talk without a call to action is a bit like a date that leads you into the friend zone. <laughs> it's nice while it lasts, it's full of potential, but it's ultimately frustrating. So, let me take you back to my childhood in the 1970s and 1980s, when I dreamed of having a successful business. In those days, Poland was being misruled in the Polish People's Republic and moved into martial law. To give you the context, my father was teaching philosophy in Oxford University, and my mother was at home, heroically raising four children, including my younger sister, who was seriously handicapped with Down syndrome. There were no business role models in my family, and not among my parents' friends. And whether by misjudgment or bad luck, when I did talk to adults about my business ideas, they either didn't understand or they were discouraging. And if I talked to my school friends, well, they weren't really my friends, they teased me and they mocked me. And the lesson I learned was that it's best to avoid rejection by keeping my ideas to myself. I avoided rejection by telling nobody about my business ideas. And that led to serious problems later, because the first time my ideas went into the world, 
they were rejected not by family, not by friends, but by the market, which wasn't very interested in my products and services. These days, when I'm teaching entrepreneurship classes, I tell the class participants, you should embrace rejection. Look for people who are going to shoot your ideas down for at least three reasons. One, they may be right. You know, maybe your idea is crazy, and it's far better to get that feedback early than take out a second credit, quit your job, and be told by the market that your idea sucks. Two, maybe your idea is pretty good, but there are a few things wrong with it, and that rejection will help you understand what's wrong. You can't solve a problem till you've defined it, and that criticism, that rejection, can help you define it. And thirdly, well, the whole point of my talk is to give people the experience of embracing rejection, and through that rejection, you can improve your impact and craft your future. Now, I realize for this audience of successful people, maybe my ideas aren't completely convincing. It's tough to get a job in Sabre. It's tough to keep a job in Sabre. Sabre is a market leader. Maybe you've got a well-paid job, you've got an apartment that you own, or maybe you own it together with a bank, but you own your own place. I see that spoke to some of you. Um, you own your own place, maybe you've got children, a car, you have an annual holiday, maybe you've got a wife and a girlfriend, a husband and a boyfriend, maybe I should say husband or boyfriend, not husband and boyfriend, but hey, <laughs> <laughs> someone's laughing, 2019, you know. We're tolerant here. Um, and you're thinking, why should I embrace that rejection? Well, the reason you should embrace rejection, as I said, is that rejection is the, is the flip side of opportunity. Every time someone rejects your project, your idea, or your proposal, they're rejecting something that you wanted to happen, some impact that you were planning to make. All of my business successes, all 14 trading companies, wouldn't have started if I was afraid of rejection. And there's another 20 companies that fail. Fear of rejection is what you need to focus on. If you're not regularly exp experiencing the fear of rejection, you're not pushing out of your comfort zone, you're not trying to make things happen that wouldn't happen anyway, and you're certainly not taking advantage of your opportunities. I would go further and say that if you're not regularly experiencing the fear of rejection, you're not pushing yourself. You're not going as far as you could, and you're not crafting your future. Right. Now, I'm going to use an example. Let's say, maybe I won't go to that example. I would say that in business, the senior management of Sabre do not want you to be complacent complacency is dangerous. Here we have a deer happily sleeping. Here we have a dog happily sleeping. And they're both safe because the dog is on a chain and the deer is behind a cage. The third slide is a little more worrying. When I googled impala and antelope and sleeping and savannah, there are no images of a sleeping impala on the savannah. That's because the complacent sleeping impala got eaten. The reason a deer is always looking nervous is because the nervous ones survive. Now, possibly it's hard to relate to being eaten. So let's come back to relationships. Um, apply this to your personal life. Which is better? Are you going to be the sort of person who sits there waiting for someone to approach you? Or are you going to risk rejection and approach the person you find really attractive? We know what's better. Suppose, suppose that your partner is taking you for granted. They don't know about your strains and stresses at work. They don't know what you really care about. They don't know what gets you really excited. Suppose that's your partner and you're here at Talk and Roll and you meet someone who is interested in you who does care about what you care about, well, your partner may be making a mistake, right? Or the other way around, and this might be more worrying for some of you. Suppose you're taking your partner for granted. 
Suppose you're not really interested in what they're interested in, you're not focusing on their needs. Well, who knows what they're up to while you're here at Talk and Roll, <laughs> and no phone calls now. So where, where, where am I taking you with this idea? Maybe I'll take the, the eaten antelope off the, off the slide. Where am I taking you with this? Um, as I said, rejection is the flip side of opportunity. If you're not pushing yourself, if you're not risking rejection, you're not making the most of your life. And perhaps, perhaps I'll give an example from, from my life. Because I was looking back at some of my regrets, and one of the things that I regretted in my life was that when I was at Cambridge University, I didn't join the Cambridge Footlights comedy group from which many of the world's great comedians have come. I loved the idea of standing in front of an audience and telling a joke that worked, <laughs> but I was terrified of the idea that I would experience the mass rejection of the crowd if no one laughed at my jokes. But I'm drinking my own Kool-Aid, I'm following, following my own medicine, I'm, doing, I'm not being a hypocrite, so I signed up a few years ago to join Krakow Stand Up Comedy, the first English language comedy group in Krakow, and I started doing open mic nights. Now, to set the context, if you're going to tell jokes about it, you have to be it. If you're Italian, you can tell Italian jokes, American, American jokes, etc. You can hear where you're going, where this is going. Um, for, this, for the sake of this extract from Krakow stand-up comedy open mic nights, I'm British, I'm Polish, I'm divorced, and I'm single. Okay, for the sake of, th and all those things happen to be true. Now, are you ready for some stand-up? I think you can do better than... Okay, let's set the context. You've been drinking heavily, okay? <laughs> you're in a cellar in Krakow, and you're looking forward to laughing loudly. In fact, can you practice? Can this side of the room laugh loudly? <laughs> can this side of the room cheer? Yeah. Are you ready for some stand-up? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome onto the stage, Richard Lucas. <laughs> My name's Richard. <laughs> That's not a joke. <laughs> and, I, and I'm from England, where the government is battling with the Supreme Court. The traffic is terrible, and our politicians are ugly and stupid. And so I decided to move to Poland. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm recently divorced. It's fantastic. I've got time for my hobbies, time for my friends, and time to hide from my ex-wife and, uh, and her lawyers. <laughs> I am single at the moment, and how many of you know about FWB, Friends with Benefits? <laughs> that nervous laugh. It goes in a Tinder profile alongside ONS. And we all know ONS means Office of National Statistics. I don't know why people reject the Office of National Statistics. So. I'm trying friends with benefits, and I have to say, it's not going very well. <laughs> I'm not getting many benefits at all. <laughs> and, and he's not my friend anymore. <laughs> so, thank you. That's the end of Crack Eye Stand Up Comedy, so let's give Richard Lucas a... Uh, okay. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm not Jerry Seinfeld yet. But it's been an incredible experience for me, pushing way beyond my comfort zone into the world of stand-up comedy. So I'm only giving that as an example, that it's possible to go beyond where you would go anyway if you're ready to embrace the rejection. So what can you do with this? You need to do an audit of your own life, of your working life, of your private life. Think of, you may feel you've tried hard to get to where you are now. It was a big success. But don't be complacent. Don't stop there. Think about what you really want to do next and how you're going to get there. And for sure, that involves approaching people, making proposals, discussing things to which they might say no. They may say no. Don't let the fear of no push you back, but let that motivate you to try. Because you only live once, and whether in work or in your private life, there's no reason not to take the risk. So. I said that there would be a call to action. 
So what I want you to do now is in the next 20 seconds, I want you to all stand up. And I want you to turn to your neighbor and tell them either what primary school, gymnasium, high school, or university you went to. Stick with schooling. Just turn to them and tell them what school you went to. And when you've told them and you've got that information from the other person, sit down. You've got 20 seconds. Go. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Shh. After twenty seconds, sit down. Thank you. Now, what would happen if you approached your primary school or your gymnasium or your lyceum and you offered to give them a talk about what it's like working in IT, what it's like having a professional career? how you got your job, how to do a job interview. What would happen? There are only really three things that might happen if you made that offer. One is that they might say no. Two is that they might not reply, which is a kind of rejection. And three is they might say yes. My call to action is that you should approach one of your schools and offer to give that talk. Why? If they reject you, or they don't answer, you will have experienced that feeling of rejection, and it's not so bad. It's not going to kill you. <laughs> you haven't failed completely. I've m many times offered to give that kind of talk in schools, and they don't answer. But you will have experienced rejection. But if they say yes, what's going to happen then? In a few weeks or months, and I spoke to some Sabre managers. Apparently, Sabre will look kindly on you taking some time off to do this, although that's not a guarantee if you went to school in Cape Town. I don't know if S Sabre will pay the fare. Um, but, although if anyone can fix you an air ticket, I guess it could be Sabre, maybe. <laughs> um, if they say yes, in a few weeks or months, there you'll be in front of a group of 10-year-olds uh, trying to be interesting. For sure, it will be a little bit out of your comfort zone because it's tough talking to kids. But on the other hand, you can do role play. You can get them to interview you as if you were a candidate, get them to think about how they need to prepare in order to get a job. It will be valuable for them and it will be challenging for you and good for you, out of your comfort zone, making progress. And the only reason that meeting will happen is because you risked rejection. So can you turn back to your neighbor, the same one you spoke to, and just tell them if you're ready to approach your high school? And I'm going to give you 10 seconds or approach your school. Just turn back to the person you spoke to and make that talk and roll commitment to go and do something positive for the next generation. 10 seconds now. Go. So, ladies and gentlemen, talk and roll. To close, when 91-year-old Wojciech Naremski, who survived not only the Battle of Monte Cassino, but also prison in the Soviet Union during the Second World War, closed TEDx Kashmir 2015, he said, if you're lucky enough to have a family, your life and your freedom. You should appreciate your family, your life and your freedom, and do something worth doing with your life. My message to Talk and Roll is this. You should embrace rejection because every time you experience rejection or the fear of rejection, that's when you're pushing your boundaries and you have a greater chance to do something significant in your working life or your private life. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Richard. Thank you. Hold on, hold on. Everyone's don't running off stage so don't fast. Don't go anywhere, Richard. Wait. Okay. We have, we have questions. questions. Okay. Good. So could you please <coughs> tell us about your first uh, successful and then unsuccessful business? Well, my first successful business was when I was nine years old. <laughs> I, I was at a boarding school in Oxford, but I was a day boy, and the boarding, the boys who, uh, an internet, the boys who lived in school weren't allowed off the premises, so I used to bring Lizaki lollipops into school in my rucksack, <laughs> and I used to <laughs> buy them for half a British pence and sell them for <laughs> one or two p, which gave me the wrong lesson that you can double your money every day. <laughs> <laughs> um, and an uh, unsuccessful business? There are so many. Um, Li li literally, I've, s I've literally started 20 businesses that have failed, and I think that to go in, there probably isn't time to go into all, all the details, but I would say to anyone here, it doesn't matter what your family says, it doesn't matter what your friends say, it doesn't matter what the investors say, just listen to the customers. The times I've got it right, I've listened to the customers, and the times I've got it wrong is when I haven't. Good, wonderful, thank, thank you. you. One more time. Uh, uh, one, one more question oh, before one more we question. go, one more question. Uh, how do you manage the emotions that goes along with rejection? Well, I used to be really bad at this, and I think that in cognitive behavioral therapy, there's this concept of separating what happens from how you feel about it. And if you're good at thinking, just because you feel like shit doesn't mean it is shit. You think, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like shit, but the world is still going on. You can control your feelings, and the way you deal with it, you think, oh, that really sucks. Now what? And then you stand up and move on. Very good. Please put your hands together. Thank you.